NFTs, no fun town, no fresh taxes, not flexible taxis, or in reality, non-fungible tokens. So friends, I am the man you may know as Z from Our Views Will Kill You, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about an article I stumbled across, and I think it's something we should all discuss, because I think it's important. And it's something that's kind of been this weird, pervasive thing in the in the universe now, where they're talking about NFTs all the time, and what is that? What, where does it come from? I'm not here to go through the history of it, but what I do want to recognize is that us as gamers, or many of you who may be gamers, longtime gamers, have been exposed to this NFT thing for a long, long time. I really, I, I don't know the exact begin, beginning of it, but I know my first experience was in Diablo 2, where people had Stones of Jordan, which was this ring that became the in-game currency to trade to uh, trade for items. Eventually, people realized that they could sell real game, like real money for these tokens, and they became valuable. Uh, <clears throat> where they weren't exactly tokens, but they were an in-game item that you could sell. So people would sell, you know, they would trade back and forth through different forums, or they would send money to each other, do all sorts of weird stuff in order to get these to buy like the next best weapon, whether it was like a Baritza Doe uh, crossbow or something like random. And there was a whole in-game currency for it, and they would just spam. Now, that was one level, and you would start getting scammers and things like that. And then I remember in World of Warcraft, where they started making uh, gold farming became a thing, where people were, you would see, they would, uh, they would be from other countries, and they wouldn't speak English, and they would be in an area just farming gold over and over and over again. And if you killed them, they wouldn't do anything about it. They would just keep going back to doing what they were doing until you got tired of killing them or they would log into a different zone. Really bizarre. They wouldn't respond to anybody. You would almost think they were bots, but they were real players actually going out and getting gold. And this also became tainted that economy as well, where you would get con artists who would buy things on eBay. And you'd be able to buy gold. You know, you'd see gold advertising, which would get banned. You'd be in the middle of the barrens you know, a, a place in World of Warcraft and you'd see people spamming for uh, gold and things like that. So as gamers, we're used to this where in-game items are for sale, non-real things that you can just buy in exchange. And it's part of the culture. It's part of the lexicon. We understand that. Uh, GTA 5, which today is still one of the highest playing games, has shark cards. Shark cards can be used with real money just like in Red Dead Redemption 2, to buy in-game products. Whether it's different skins or cars or things like that, you can use it to buy whatever you want. That money is going back to Rockstar or whoever. We've seen it even up to recently where it seems like they have a term for it, looter shooters, and they're talking about almost like the Avengers, same thing, where you could buy skins well, they're shifting this to like a paid to earn and, and it got wrapped up in loot crates. But again, as us gamers here, we, we, we've seen this. We know where this goes. We know how it gets exploited. I would say the majority of us are cautious about it at best. And you wait for the noobs to get suckered by these scams and things like that. What gamers don't want is pay to earn, or like uh, play to earn. Like they don't want their progression in a game stuck because they have to buy more add-ons. So here's where the non, the NFTs, the non-fungible tokens come into place is normies don't really know what they are and they think, and they don't have much experience with them. And here they come through and they think that they're investable assets where you can buy some digital picture of something like Eminem blowing a ton of money on it or that dopey girl who was selling her farts on the internet, selling NFTs there, like NFTs of her farts. What the hell are those? Nothing. So the game companies were starting to get involved and they were really pushing for it. So the best example of this, before I get to the Sega story, is recently you had Castlevania came out to celebrate their 35th anniversary. You know, storied franchise, some of the greatest games ever made. They come out. What do they do to celebrate their 35th anniversary? They come out and instead of a new entry or something, they had a successful Netflix show. 
people have a lot of fond memories about it. It's it's still you know a, a marketable, valuable uh, brand that you could still work off. Konami announced the Memorial NFT collection. 14 images, 14 Castlevania images containing game scenes, music, and some new visuals drawing from the series history. Wow. They're going to be auctioned off on January 12th, which is, uh, if you're watching this, that would, have been, that would be tomorrow or the same day, whatever day I decide to release this. They're marked as samples, in case you know. You thought you were going to right-click and save them. But there's some images below. We'll take a look at them. Here's this stupid looking box with like the start menu, right? That's not that exciting. Here's a map. I don't know which game it's from, but it's a map. You can also get, you know, Castlevania Vampire Killer. Now, people who like to throw away their money, like Eminem and, and other celebrities and people who are, you know, when you find out the real deal, like it's not like they're really paying cash for this. You'll hear about celebrities buying these NFTs and it's something like Eminem pays for it in some random Bit Bitcoin substitute, whether, you know, some Litecoin or something else, some some sort of digital coin that maybe he was given as a, as a gift or invested or he's just giving, he's using money that's not real to buy something that's not real. When it comes to you and I and, and us playing video games and, and other things like what are we buying? You know, at least in a game, I know I'm getting value for what I'm trying to buy. You know, if I want to move ahead in a certain game, it's a judgment call whether or not you want to do that. I personally don't believe in it, but it's there for people to catch up who just wanted to start the game or maybe they want to do something extravagant. You know, in, in GTA 5, you can own all sorts of properties and you can have access to more material. You could do it without buying it, though. You don't need to do it, which I think is the important thing. For people who want to do it, that's fine, but you don't need to. And here you have Castlevania. They can't celebrate their 35th anniversary with something better? Like, what What are you guys thinking here? Like, this is a joke, right? So to me, this is a giant fail. So the point is, Ubisoft is, is all in. Square Enix thinks 2022 will be the year of the NFT. But there's no real value to it. They don't, they're not having invented a way for us to interact with it. So now it looks like Sega, the latest big company, has decided not to proceed with their NFT plan. Now, of course, if I thought that they were, if they thought there was any way to really make money off this and not tarnish their, their brand, they would 100% doing it. They are not innocent. They're, they're just another big corporation. But they may have seen the light. They say we need to carefully assess many things as how we can mitigate the negative elements because it's perceived as money making and just nickeling, nickeling and diming everybody. You know, they're not really in it for the fans or to, to provide any sort of value. It's just junk. You know, like I said, you can implement it in a way that I think is fair to people. But for the most part, this just looks like a, a scam. And that's why I think the whole NFT thing is it's a fad. Unless blockchain becomes something real that people can actually see value in. And I am not smart enough to come up with an idea on that. Someone else will have to do that. You're going to continue to see this kind of thing where they're just looking for, as they said, it, it looks like, uh, here, let me read this to you because they've got many negative reactions and the CEO directly commented on this he says we need to carefully assess many things such as how we can mitigate negative elements how much we can introduce this within the japanese regulation what will be accepted and what will not be by the users then we will consider this further if this leads to our mission constantly creating forever captivating but if it is perceived as a simply money making i would like to make this make a decision not to proceed that's pretty interesting that they would take that take because they've had a lot of backlash. And that's where you go back and you see how dreadful of an idea this is, where they're just, they're all in on NFTs and they think this is the, the best thing in the world. Bad, bad move. Especially when you see what happens when governments get involved, especially uh, where Europe started banning loot crates. If this gets put in the same category as loot crates, where you're just scamming your your customers, it's 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 bad for everybody. It's bad for the industry. 
You then have these these once great franchises like Battlefield and things like that, where they're just shells of what they were because they've become tainted. They've destroyed entire franchises because of it. So I just thought this was a really interesting article and really uh, something something fascinating. What, what do you think? Have you ever bought an a a NFT yourself? Would you buy an NFT? Have you ever bought a Stone of Jordan? That's what I really want to know because I remember SOJs. And that's what happened was I, I read this article and I immediately thought about my Diablo 2 experience. Do you play Diablo 2? Did you ever buy any gold? What was your experience? Did you did you get it? Did you get what you paid for? I'm pretty sure I had somebody that I was friends with who bought their own that bought a pre-built profile from the um, from eBay or something like that and it turned out to be completely fraud and they ended up losing like 200 bucks. So, again, what's your experience? Have you ever had anything like that? And I think that's the difference is is the gaming community is much more attuned to this. They've been burned by these things, and they look at it with a skeptical eye where regular people are just like, ooh, this sounds new and interesting. I'll get me one of them NFTs, and it'll go up in value when it really won't. So anyway, thanks again for listening and entertaining my ideas for today. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you feel like there was some value here, please subscribe. We could use the subscriptions. It will help us build this channel, and we hope to bring you more news, rants, reviews, and things like that in the digital space, whether it be game reviews or even or mostly movie reviews and TV reviews, but be sure to catch our full-length audio podcast as well if that's something that you would like to check out. It's free. We hope you enjoy it, and uh, I am on to the next one. Thank you.